It's doing this, doing that, it's doing this. Yo, thanks, man. I appreciate you, man. All right, salute. All right, yo, man. I had to wait till Cass come back from dinner to do this show, and I apologize for those who uh been waiting around. If they was waiting around, I don't come out on Mondays and stuff like that and do nothing. Uh, and you know how I am. I I do it, you know, whenever I feel like it. You know what I'm saying? But it's a couple of things I want to talk to y'all about today. Um, and this is about uh, Chaz, because this is the day he died a year ago, man. And it's, it's a funny situation that like his daughter died on this day, too, uh, July 13th. Uh, she was shot by some gang members out there in Queens. And then he uh, put the Black Gangster album on July 13th. And he ended up dying on July 13th himself. And uh, it's a slumber day, but I rejoice in the fact of knowing him as a brother as an OG, as a homie, a as a gentleman. And um, I'm going to tell a couple of stories, you know, in honor of him, you know, because a lot of people got a lot of stuff effed up. A lot of guys in New York City wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for Chaz. You know, he was a good dude. And uh, let me do as I normally do. Shout out a couple of people that came on here to share their time with me. Um, uh, Vision V, and uh, I just wanted to say out to you, what's up, Whiskey Don? That I didn't mean to come on you like that, brother, but, you know, I do this for the fun of it. I do this for the hell of it, you know what I'm saying? You no, know, none of this pays my bills. None of this gonna help me get to the next level if I decide to do something different. I'm going to buy a house and set up a kitchen and everything that I could film and I could do my shit in because that's what I want to do. I wanna show the young brothers while I got time on this earth, you know, how to really win a woman's heart. You know what I'm saying? And cooking, and I know you could do the romantic thing. All y'all could, like you say, all y'all hanging low and could beat it down and everything like that. But I'm gonna teach you how to to, to feed your kids. Uh, I want to do it. Where I can show you how to do it the expensive way and the cheap way, but it all tastes good. That's that's what I said I'm gonna do. So that's why I'm going back to my hometown for a while. I'm going to buy a house because it's uh, affordable that I can buy a house and do all that and still maintain what I got here and what I'm doing here. So, uh, didn't mean to come off at you like that, brother, but um, if you think I'm doing this for likes and views and shows or whatever y'all call it or, or, or or, or clout or whatever, nah, brother, you're wrong. And, 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 and I'm gonna nip it in the bud to let you know right off the top. Nah, you got the wrong one. I'm not it for that. Gerald Hemp, thanks for being the first one. Lucky left. Mac Mill, Rob Cop out there in Kansas City. Jesus Torres, your name, hey, Zeus, it ain't no Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on, Jesus Torres. No, it's hey, Zeus. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you, Jesus. What's up? Uh, the Excel. What's up? Yo, I've been trying to get on for a lot, like my man Whiskey Don. Thank you, brother. You know what I'm saying? And that's crazy, man. You know, when I when I look back at Chaz, man, and how we met, and how 
Snoop Noop thought they was going to run off with his money, and he had a gang of dudes surround the hotel and everything like that to make sure he come perform. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, he gave some of the biggest concerts out there in Queens at Club Missouri. And then he was all over the country doing doing uh, shows. He was on that uh, Jodeci tour and did all Naughty by Nature show, uh, uh, Naughty by Nature parties and things like that on that Jodeci tour back in the day. That's probably before, you know, a few of y'all guys out there. Small girl, high, small girl. Element Miz215, what's up with you? Mac, Mac Men out there in Amsterdam. Salute to Amsterdam. All my DC people, you understand? Bet the 55, chase money. Listen, so um, Chaz was a good dude, man, whereas that people could call him. And the reason I haven't told y'all the whole 50 cent story behind Chaz and that whole situation is because I'm going to say that for the book and I'm going to tell y'all the God honest truth about everything in it. And I'm saving that for my book because y'all want to hear some stuff that y'all never heard before. You know, uh, your man, I could tell you this, your man, um, T.I., he's screaming on New York niggas and everything like that. But he never told y'all when he was back in um, at the at the Mirage when Hot 97 was getting uh, uh, like the celebrity things like that. A nigga took his chain and everything. They took all his jewelry. And it was Chaz who made that phone call that got his jewelry back to him. That's what kind of dude Chaz was. He made it good. He said, yo, because he was a stick-up kid himself. He said, yo, it was a good stick-up. <laughs> What's a good stick-up? <laughs> Y'all got to give these kids some money. You understand? They, they, did, they, they did what they do. And that's how T.I. got his jewelry back. But it was for it, if it wasn't for Chaz, he wouldn't have never got that back. You remember, don't you, Ti? Hot ninety seven, Mirage backstage, back then. No, yeah, okay. That's why he probably mad at New York niggas. He having flashbacks. <laughs> oh, Gene, Ti, Ti gonna come at you. Ti gonna yo. This bodyguard niggas are like, come on, T.I., stop that, man. Anybody, anybody knows this is called a mandatory sentencing. A mandatory sentencing. You want to scream more? And I'm from St. Louis, nigga. I love, I love the Lou. I love the Lou with all my heart. You know what I'm saying? But New York is my... My second love, I've been in New York long as I belong and I've been to St. Louis. I was born in St. Louis. I did my last 30 some years here in New York. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas from New York didn't know I was from St. Louis. I don't know why. I used to say Fenner. There. <laughs> I like to do it right there, my man Chingy. Shout it out. So now, check this out. Everybody know about mandatory sentencing. And when you get caught with something called an assassin tool and silencers or assassin tools, the judge have to give you a mandatory sentence. Unless, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I know my people from Atlanta. No, not my man, P.I. Not my man, P.I. <laughs> Okay, Eric Ola, how y'all doing? Israel, what you doing out there in Cali, boy? I didn't go through that stuff you sent to me yet, but I'm going to let the people know about a lot of stuff, man. And thank you for the education that you helped me with that I could go on and look at stuff myself. You understand? Chase Money, what's happening? Sharon Wesley. So now, um, Chaz was, y'all got to, y'all got to, they, they doing a, they were doing a movie on Chaz. He had already signed the contracts and everything like that. And then, you know, he died 
because of uh, some blood clots in his legs. You know what I'm saying? He was on the plane for like three hours. They had him sitting on the runway for three hours. Then they had him sitting on the runway coming from New York to Atlanta for two hours. So he had caught some clots. And could fly, he had been flying back and forth from Cali to New York, Cali to Atlanta, for the movie that they shooting on them. So what I found out was is that if you fly a lot and you got high blood pressure and you could you're accessible to high cholesterol with blood clots and stuff like that, you gotta you can't do all that flying. You cannot do all that flying, or you gotta wear some kind of compression socks or whatever things like that. Because Heavy D died the same way, blood clots in his leg from flying back and forth, from flying back and forth and everything like that. He had them blood clots in his leg and he ended up dying. We didn't know that. I didn't know that shit. That's crazy. Ice, what's up with you, Q? Murphy by law. Cherise. Cherise, stop doing all those hearts for you have me feeling some kind of way about you. Every time you come on the show, Sharif, you throw all them hearts up there. I Kimberly Wilson, see, she just do a regular. Hi, Jean, my boy. See, Kimberly just do a regular. Sharif want to be all with the hearts and stuff. Yo, Kimberly, tell her that ain't going to get me like that. D. Harrison, what's good with you? What's up? DJ Shug Bryan, salute to you, brother. You know what I'm saying? So that's how heavy did. And before I get into, you know, some other stuff like this, I want to say one uh, one other thing. Damn, did you see that stuff with Al B. Shaw? He said, I know Kim death with some felonious stuff happening with it. And Al B. Shaw ain't the type of dude that ever talked about nothing. He ain't never talked about a damn thing when everybody trying to say his son was Diddy's son and Diddy took his son. Diddy got this, that, and the third, the whole nine yards. Now, nah, all that was propaganda for Quissy to get into the business and do what he needed to do. You understand? I'll be sure always been a part of that boy's life. Even though it used to be like 90 degrees, he used to walk around with leather suits on. <laughs> I was at my aunt's house. She stayed right across the street from Eddie F. Eddie F was the DJ for Heavy D and the boys. DJ Eddie F, he the one talk pop all the shit he know about the board and all that, y'all. And I'll be sure I used to be sitting on the porch of my aunt's porch. And that was all in Mount Vernon. Shout out to my niggas out there in Mount Vernon. And my men out there in Mount Vernon. And my real people out there in Mount Vernon. I was saying, I used to be sitting on my aunt's porch, and Spinderella used to be over there with a sucking on her thumb. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, but she used to sit on the porch just sucking on her thumb, and I was like, "Yo, that's Spinderella." Oh my God! You know, you can see. I guess she was staying with Eddie and them or something like that, because she was over there a whole hell of a lot. And that was Eddie was a man. So um, I watched. I'll be sure because he used to have, I think Eddie had, I don't know if it was in the basement or in the garage part. That's where he had the um, his um, studio. And it was, I swear, man, it was hiding the rat's ass, man. And I'll be sure it was jumping out the car with a whole leather suit on <laughs> with dark shades. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Showbiz. Smoke Jones. Smoke Jones, what up with you, man? How y'all doing, man? Danielle, art, artist. That, what's that? Danielle, artist. No, you back, Danielle. No, I don't. <laughs> uh. Yo, you're this guy, Holly Weird. Why don't you tell people the truth? Big was an actor, bro. 
Bro, he wasn't real. Big was about as real as niggas can get, bro. Big was a good dude. Nah, I don't know where you get that from. Big was a good dude. He wasn't no killer or nothing like that. But he took care of his people when he had his people around him, and he was a good dude. Uh, uh, Nike, Lugs, Mecca, everybody used to give Big boxes of clothes. And Big was like, yeah, he'll take it. And then he'll ask everybody around him, yo, you want this, you want that? He'll ask D-Rock with the big stuff. He's like, yo, D-Rock, you want that? D-Rock's like, nah. He's like, yo, Gene, you want it? I said, yeah, I'll take it, bro. Thanks, Big. And give it to the niggas on the block. Do I have any story about Pete Rock and CL Smooth? If I do, you're gonna be they're gonna be real mad at me. Not CL Smooth, but Pete Rock. <laughs> Pete Rock is a good dude. Pete is a good dude. But Cancun Pete. I wouldn't tell that one, man. In the book. <laughs> That was crazy. Yeah, senor. Senor, you. Yo, senor. Papi, no, senor. <laughs> you can't do that here in Mexico. <laughs> Yo, why y'all even bring that one up, man? Zed Jackson, what's up with them, Zed? What's up with them, Zed? <laughs> we ain't going to do that one. We ain't going to do that one. Dante Jones, hello to you too. Sharice, how you doing? That's a little better, Sharice. Thank you, Sharice. I be all liking you and shit. You throw all them hearts up there. Heart here, heart there, heart there. Heart there, heart there. I'm like, oh, Sharice. Sharice. My Sherry amor. I'll be like thinking about you and shit like that. And I go to DM you and you see me in your DM. Uh, I don't like you, old man. <laughs> Yo, man. I'm here to have fun with y'all, man. And tell y'all a little stuff. James Hunter. That's, hold on. What up, GD? Yo, James Hunter is my man. Who this? Teddy GT. Teddy G. T.W., thank you for the super chat. He said, this is what he said now. He said, my boy James Hunter said, what up? He said, you were a beast on the court at Tennessee. Yeah, man. I'm yo, I got it. In my book, I'm talking about how that coach did me. My man, I'm not saying that I would, I could have made pros, but I could have. You understand? What he did was, and I don't want to give too much of it, he told me if I don't kiss his ass, I wasn't going to play basketball there because I was a senior. And, man, every day I went out there, man, I would dive on the floor. He said, yo, you will go through a backboard. Now, I'm going to tell you how my game was. If you take Dennis Rodman, and you take Buck Williams and put them together. And, 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 and listen to me. This is an NBA basketball player. And I get on my man. Uh, uh, what's my man out there? Mr. Skinny. Out there in South Carolina by this boy. Shout out to Skinny. What up, Skinny? I talk about this all the time. I bust this man at Hards Grant. I bust his ass in the NIT. We was playing him in the NIT in the, I think it was the second round, Clemson. And Horace Grant had like 14, or 12 to 14 points at the half or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I told my coach, I said, yo, let me get him. Because he was playing six, he was playing center. And Horace Grant is about 6'10. I'm 6'7. My I, the guy on our team was 6'9. Clifford Morgan, then we had another white dude on at 6'11". But I told Coach, I said, Coach, let me get him. I got him, Coach. Coach said, I'm going to give him to you. I took this right here, put it in his chest the rest of the night. 
I mean, like I'm, I, I got right in his numbers on his ass. He had 16 points at the end of the game. I think I had about 14, 15, something like that. But I had 16 points. And then the nigga was crying. I seen the nigga down on the bench crying. I took a white, I took the towel and dumped it into the uh, the the, the gate aid bucket. And I was walking across the floor while he was down on the bench crying. I let your horse. And I threw the towel at the shit and hit hit the one of the assistant coach. They tried to run after me, and the motherfucking uh, the security stopped. <laughs> oh my god! So Ted G, you know my man James Hunter was. James Hunter's supposed to have been in the pros. He did football and back. He was a hell of a quarterback in Florida, but he was a hell of a, a, a ball player too down at, at Chat. Tell James I say shout out, bro. Artie Green, come on, Artie. I love you. Artie Green, is he got a, 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 a show on, on Instagram that like play the slow music and stuff like that on Facebook and Instagram. Y'all need to check it out. Artie was one of my students. You understand? Artie had all the girls in high school. Yo, he got a smile that'll light up a motherfucking room when he walk in the door. Good brother and everything. Got into the hustling game and stuff like that, but he got out. Now his son is about to go pro in basketball or something like that. I know uh, he, he got a son because Artie was a hell of a basketball player. Artie Green. Thank I, thanks for that super, that, that super chat, Artie. Appreciate you, brother. Chris Carter. Oh, Chris Carter. I love that shit. Chris Carter said, yo, Big Gene, you're going to come out with the cookbook? I'm going to come out with the cookbook. I want to finish this one first. I took this back from this Italian dude. Much love to Pete. He caught the COVID and everything. And then I, I got like 70 pages in. I'm going to do uh, about 140 more. You understand? And I'm going to get it out to y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get that cookbook out to you. He said, Chris Carter said, yo, I did one of your recipes for my girl. Much love. Yo, appreciate that, Chris. Pre appreciate that. Got a lot more for you, brother. J-Rod, what up with you, bro? Amboy, New Jersey. Salute to y'all, man. Out there. That's DJ Shug Bryant. Y'all niggas, y'all want to hear the sound. Y'all y'all better check out Shug. Shug Bryant out there in Amboy and everywhere. <laughs> Yui Washington, what's up with you, bro? How y'all doing out there? Yeah, man. Chad stopped a lot of situations, man. And he was a good brother. Anytime you know he had to manage Foxy Brown and was trying to bring her career back, Foxy Brown, I'm telling you. Ooh, we got one from Hopper 40. Yo, Big Gene, T.I. got gladed. This looked like a good place for a stick up. <laughs> stick him up. Stick him up. Right there, right there on 156th Street on 12th Avenue at the Mirage. He cannot lie about that one. They might try to keep it quiet because he was with the Murder, Inc. guys. Mm, 50 of them probably did it. <laughs> they didn't know. <laughs> Is Hooper 40? Not Hopper? Salute to you, brother. I'm sorry about that, man. Hooper 40. All right. Uh, you 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 can hoop uh, 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 or you 40. Which one is this? Let me know, brother. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get it wrong. You see me in the street, you were like, yo, man, you got my shit wrong, man. Yo, big man, you, big man, come here. You got my shit wrong. Okay. Yeah, this is all about this. Chaz, man, listen here, man. We lost a good one, man. We lost a good one. We used to get some parties like crazy. We gave a party with Shaq at the uh, All Star Ca Cafe in uh, Vegas. Off the chain, off the chain. 
Huey, you here, brother? Huey Washington in the house. Yo, see, listen here, man. The reason I call people names out, because I'm going to engage you with me. I can't, you know, I'm not no actor. I'm not no, no, uh, uh, no, I don't know, YouTuber or whatever like this. I, I don't, I ain't go to school for this shit. This is, when I'm with my niggas and when I'm with my peoples and shit like that around there, this is how I act. You know, we have fun, we joke, we talk about it. Yo, we snap on each other. You know what I'm saying? Yo, we have fun. Hold up. Gene, Vision TV. Uh, Gene, I can't wait for the book to come out. P.S. Karen Hunter was probably doing lesbian stuff, allegedly, back in the days. P.S. Rest in peace, Chaz. Cool guy. Yeah. Salute to you, Vision. I hope you got, uh, I don't know what time you came in, but I apologize to you for, you know, uh, that little exchange we had, man. But I, I'm not trying to, you know, you know, be somebody else or uh if you if you think i'm like your 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 latest uh what you call that your uh your latest your your rapper your youtube and stuff like that no i'm far from it brother i lived all this and through the grace of god and my mother and them prayer warriors i'm here today Bro, I'm telling you the God honest truth, man. I, yo, I got news articles where they was trying, them crackers was trying to give me 10 years in jail. 10 years. I was in a shootout. Niggas pulled me to the back of the car. Nigga, get on your knees. And I was like, I'm too big to get on my knees, man. Run. I say, I'm going to walk fast, okay? Lady ended up getting shot in the back, kid got shot in the leg, the whole nine yards. So they ain't think that thing was on that ankle. I'm just telling you, bro, I lived this through the grace of God. I had legitimate hits out on me. Legitimate hits by niggas who was responsible for mm, in Harlem. But when they found out parole officer deal, was Big Gene, they was all the same person. I'm here today because of my brother. My brother was like, yo, y'all come to kill who? Yeah, this nigga named Deal. He a parole officer. He hang out everywhere. Oh, for real? My brother, my brother, man, listen to me. I show this picture all the time. Chaz love this nigga too. Right there. That's Slick, 112, 112th Street. Slick in the family. Slick in the family. One, that's my brother. That's my god brother. That's Corey Guns, the first, first cousin. His mother raised us when I came in. Niggas came to kill me. He was like, Gene, for real? His name, his name, his name, Pro Officer Deal. Come here, Gene. Come here. Tell that story. And who was behind it? It's, yo, man, God got me here. Yo, listen to me. It's three great men that through my lifetime, but I was a baby that I know and I read about them and I know about them. But these three great men that we lived through was Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Muhammad Ali. If you know three great three men greater than them, greater than them, that had the impact on us as a people, you tell me. This that died. I Farrakhan would be one, you know, but he's still here. I said that died in my lifetime. I don't know three greater 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 of men than those three men. In my in my perspective, in my perspective, I'm here. 
because of two great men in my life. That's one of them. And Chaz is the other one. I pay homage to them, man. Because those dudes who came with me, came to get me, they was responsible for, and do your history. You could look it up. They was responsible for 58% of the murders in Harlem. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. I ain't got no love for Karen Hunt and Vision TV because she was supposed to been having my book out because she was doing it with Do Simon and Schuster. And she promised me she gave me a word, gave me a word, gave me $25,000. I was supposed to get 75 and at the last two weeks or stuff, she went AWOL because she didn't want to she didn't want to put this out. And now it's coming out. Not just my book, all the stuff about Russell Simmons, everything about all the stuff that I said. Yo, listen, I could get really deep on y'all, man. I could be really deep on y'all because these people, they want to stop Christianity. That's how deep this shit go. I didn't want to get into that, and I'm not gonna get into that with y'all because you know, you know all the you know all the stuff with that going on, and people be like, "Yo, well, Gene, well, Gene, you know what I'm saying? Gene is the atheist and all that." No, I'm not. I believe in God Almighty, but I'm telling you what these people are trying to do. I signed coach. What's up with you, boy? Now, what's this? <laughs> Poor weather, I don't know. What is what's the word? You holler at me. Ryan Munez. I'm good. Yo, I want to show y'all this, man. This is what is about me. Check it out. This dude sent me this today. I'm gonna see if y'all see this. Can y'all see this? What's up, Gene? Um, he said, "What's good, Gene? Just wanted to know how. I want you to know how grateful I." am to have you as a parole officer. I needed, what he said, I've been on parole and living righteousness for righteous, righteousness, righteous life for four years. You played a major, he put major, but he played a major part in my stay out, my, my staying out. I was on parole since 1989 and now I can experience a free life. Thanks for the words you help and the realness. I don't know if that's backwards or whatever this, that, and the third. But when I got that, man, I was like, damn. I ain't been, I've been retired for two years. He's been off for four years. I remember, I remember Rodriguez real well. He had a problem, but I helped him work through his problem because everybody that uses drugs don't have to be in jail. There's functional drug users and functional drug people everywhere you go. Got them doctors on them pills. Bargain world, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. The cash app is Big Gene 52. I appreciate the live chats and everything like that, man. But you know, uh, uh, these creeps, what they call them, YouTube, they take, they take um 30% of it. Kimmy Powell, what's up with you? Hi, Kimmy Powell. How you doing? Yeah. You say I'm the real deal? How you know? Somebody told you, Kimmy? Stop checking up on me, Kimmy. Bo 
D. Kimmel, what up with you, brother? Yo, this is crazy, and I, I'm going to end this, not now, but, you know, I'm going to hold that one. I'm going to hold that one for the end because it's some real emotional shit, and I'm trying to get through this shit right now without even going through that. You understand? Uh, I think that if Chaz and 50 would have stayed together, Fifty is his own boss, but the New York rap scene would have been the biggest, and it never would have went to Atlanta. It never would have went to Atlanta. It never went and went nowhere. Cause Cat, cause Chaz had the real power in the streets, and he had the real backing of the streets. And 50 had the ear for the streets. And it was just some poisonous niggas in Chaz's ears. And 50, like he told me, because I had a conversation with 50. He said, Gene, I didn't know who to trust. So I stopped fucking with everybody, which is by right. Because I told him, I said, yo, listen to me, man. I was my own man. I'm calling you, trying to let you know what was going on, what was going down. And you wasn't returning my phone calls. And then when you did, you told me, yo, tell them niggas to set up another, another meeting. But it was already, you know, said and done. Me and them talked out at Dre's studio in California. I was with Scott Storch. And he was shooting, he was doing Candy Shop and some other song he was doing in the studio. But me and him stopped and we talked for a minute. You know what I'm saying? And 50 used to always stop and talk to me. We was in uh, Puerto Rico. He came up to me and said, yo, Gene, they can't stop what God got planned. And I said, you facts. Even though he wasn't talking to the rest of them niggas, he wasn't talking from nobody with black hands, he would always stop and talk to me. So back then we had a re rapport. But like you said, like Chad said, yo, I'm looking out for you, Gene, because I made the introduction between you two. And I told Chaz, I'm my own man, Chaz. You know what I'm saying? I want to rock with dude. This before, you know, any of this shit went down. He said, all right, all right, cool. I'm not stopping that. I'm just letting you know. So I'm going to tell that whole story in my book. So all you niggas that want to assume shit, you understand? I'm going to let you know the truth, exactly what happened, who was the players, and how it went down. Because I ain't scared of none of them niggas. I ain't scared of none of them. East Oakland, nine slash, oh, Matt, salute to you. Craven Polk, what's up with you, brother? Timothy Hass, yes, sir. Chaz, he's a, you can watch Chaz on uh, uh, BET American Gangsters. He robbed 160 banks. How you rob 160 banks, man? <laughs> Chaz was a mastermind. He went and got his masters. 
and, and he graduated from the University of Michigan. Jazz had his master's in business and marketing. He had two degrees when he got in jail. He got his bachelor's and his master's. Come on, man. Was a mastermind. They used to go into, he used to go to college because he was on this prison reform program when they was letting the prisoners go to college. He would go into the college, go sit in the class for a little while, then rob a bank and then come back for the next class. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Genius. Did that for a long time. Just imagine, he was in college for four years. He was doing that for four years. And then, like you know, Rat bastards. Somebody else get caught doing something somewhere else. They want to tell on that. Uncle Murder, what's up with you? Black and yellow. Okay, what are you listening? All right, the, the good ones. That's Bob, Cracker Screen. What's up, Bob? Wise word been spoken. All right. Yeah, Shannon. Shannon Barnes. Yeah, the good ones always go, man. It's a void, man. It's a void in a nigga heart. Platinum Kid 1000. What's up with you, boy, boy? Answer Muhammad, respect to you too. DC Heavenly Bodies, peace. Shield Town Majors, what's up? Did I think about making a podcast? No, nah, nah, I haven't thought about making a podcast, man. I know this shit is playing and in the kitchen, but I'm not cooking right now. You understand? Um, I'm going to show a little stuff on Instagram and things like that. But in about a, another couple of weeks, I'm headed to the Lou. Look for a house and stuff like that. And then I'm going to put, uh, I got a cousin down there. Look, I got some young cousins down there. They good with the, the camera shit. So they're going to set up the camera in the kitchen, stuff like that. So every angle when I go cooking something, you will see it. And I could go through every step of the way. And then he's going to be able to rock with me to go to the grocery store. So when I go to the 99 cent store and show you buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that, I come home and show you how to put that shit together. And you be like, and you say, yo, that shit is good. And I paid $10 for a meal and I fed like nine or 10 people from it. And I paid $10 for it. Oh, Gene, come on. And it's good. You can't beat that. That's what I want to do. Because it ain't, you know, listen, man, it ain't what you spend is what you save. And if you could spend the same money and get the same good taste, you just got to have to, you got to know how to flip it. Why go there and spend all that money? I know this girl trying to tell me, you go to Audi's? Yeah, I go to Audi's. Audi's got some of the best meat because you look at the same packages, it's the same thing as Trader's Joe. It's a, Audi's is a subsidiary to Trader's Joe. People don't know that. Trader's Joe and Whole Foods, all the stuff that they have in the store, they, you, you have that in Audi's. And people won't even go to Audi's. I'm like, yo, boo, yo man, y'all out y'all mind. My 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 people from Atlanta, uh uh they mad at me because I told that TI story. Richard Hurd, what up with you boy? Yo, the people from Atlanta mad at me because I hey, yo Rich, they mad at me because I told that TI story. Listen, man, 
T.I. been going off on New York people and everything like that, but he didn't tell how a gangster from New York got his jewelry back from him by, when he was behind the scenes at Hot 97, and they got him. Never thought that story would get out, did you, T.I.? <laughs> 50 probably like, 50, 50 probably do a, a remix of that shit. <laughs> He was with John them, and, and John them people them had him up here and nigga took his shit. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> and then he got he had the nerve to get on the camera and talk about uh what's that kid named Safari? Yo, life is real hard. Life is hard. Life is hard out here. Yeah, you felt that before though, huh? I've been there, dog. I had nigga have you know, I ain't marking myself. They had four guns to my head. And through the grace of God, I came out of it and got all my shit back, except for the watch. Cops kept that. No, they did. Let me see. Can I go up a little bit? Karen Slash, what's good with you? Yeah. Halifax County, North Carolina, below. What about that Halifax, North Carolina? What? Sir? What's up there? Q to Graw. What up with you? Seton. Seton J said, Jesus. <laughs> Miss D said, Audi got some good quality food. Yes, sir. Mr. Happy Folger said, T.I. is a, a, a little sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got some nice songs. 50 got some nice songs. What's up, Dennis uh Bridgewater out there, South, South Bronx. South, South Bronx, South, South Bronx. Kill that none. South Bronx. South, South Bronx, South Bronx. Many people say the style is terrific. Hi, Kalia. Oh, yeah, the I'll Be Sure shit, man. I want to remix that one. He said he had just spoke to Kim. This shit is about to blow up, y'all. I'll about to come out and get these investigators and stuff like that. Yo. <laughs> yo, yo, I wouldn't buy no watches from Walmart, bro. <laughs> I don't do that. I love my watch game. You know what I'm saying? They don't have my they don't have the selection I like. I mean, you know, like like the cheapest watches I, I have is Invictus. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I like Invictus. It's one of my moderators. I don't understand why she called me. She should be on a damn show. You know what I'm saying? Miss Just J, what are you calling me for while I'm doing the show? <laughs> you should know. <laughs> I'm blowing you up too on the show. Yeah. What's up? All right. Later. She's supposed to be a moderator and she's talking about uh she ain't moderating the day. San Francisco, Lisa uh Willa. All the way from San Francisco. I'm getting love out there. I didn't know that. Well, how long I've been on there? Oh, 49 minutes. Time be flying, man. Time fly when you have fun, man. 
<laughs> Dennis, you keep on putting Walmart jewelry. What you work for Walmart in the jewelry department? Walmart has some nice watches. <laughs> Come see me. <laughs> yeah. Seton J, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I was around bigger than when they did the morning, the morning thing. Yeah. Did Chaz know Pop? Yeah, I'm sure he probably did. Yeah. Because uh, when they came here a couple of times, Chaz was, Chaz was with them because, you know, they was with Big D, so they was all partying together and stuff. So, yeah, he knew him. And plus, Chaz is his family. Chaz and Pop's stepfather or something like that, or uh, uh, first cousins or something. So I'm sure they knew each other. He ain't going to be around. And, you know, you know, Pac don't want to know who's who. Oh, Dennis Bridgewater, you from Trenton? Good luck. They serious out there in Trenton. <laughs> yeah, we got to watch this uh, sodium from the processed food. I signed coach the pineapple tea. Man, you ain't tried my rest with You just say the pineapple tea is the favorite. Do that, do that, uh, that sinful pie. Oh my, if you like pineapples, do that sinful pie. Oh boy. Yeah, Miss D. We had one of them in New York. I'm gonna end the show with that one. I can just park Justin Green out. Yo, man. Justin, I think that, you know, you said that Diddy probably got her whatever, whacked or whatever, allegedly. But what was funny, why would Kim tell Diddy, oh, watch out for my, uh, make sure you take care of my kids? She wasn't that sick. If I'll be sure, said they was laughing and talking the day before she died, and everything like that. How is she that sick? She, she, he said that we were laughing, joking, and talking about Quincy just got some kind of uh, Christmas show. So she didn't seem that sick or that, like she had a problem. Now, Kim used drugs. And, and that goes back from... Um, all the way back from, you know, Mr. Simmons. They had them kids strung out on them drugs. And I mean, like, she did the, the hard stuff. It's the truth, Ruth. You could be mad how she dead and the whole gone and all like that. Nigga, listen here. When I'm dead and gone and when I'm alive, niggas is going to talk about me and say what they're going to say. But they're going to never say I ever put anything in my nose and smoke and did none of that shit. You'll find one or two women that say, yeah, I was smoking and everything. Like I said, yo, Gene, hit this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to turn you out. I was like, hit that and you're going to turn me out? And it wasn't no coke or no dope. It was it made some marijuana. Yeah, okay. They probably said that. But there ain't going to be none, no, no other shit. None of that. None of that. And it's just the truth. They had that baby girl strung out on that shit all her life. You know, so she said, watch the kids and everything like that. Nigga, she ain't tell you no shit like that. That's somebody that's been sick for the last two years fighting cancer or some kind of leukemia, some terminal disease, that they had those conversations. You ain't going to feel good today and then tomorrow. Oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel, I don't feel too good. Hey, make sure you watch the kid because I'm about to die.
Dejan Malik. Yeah. They gave Wayne Williams, the, you know, for the rest of his life, right? Is he still alive or he died in prison or something? Because those were years ago. That was in like early 80s. Thank you, Mr. Green, Larry Green. Tell him to hit that like button. They ain't gonna do that. John Stem, what up with you, boy, boy? No, but they had the girls, all that shit, man. I sound close. I don't know if Miss Wallace and Miss Shakur get along. Man, I don't know. If oh, Just Jay. Now you decide to come in here, Just Jay. What time it is? I've been on for almost an hour. You gonna come in now? It took me like forty-five minutes to get on. They didn't want to let me on. Well, let's, let's bring it up. We didn't talk about, since you just now coming on, Miss Just J, let me just tell you, we talked about T.I. We talked about, you know, how T.I. he got his chain taken and Chaz got it back for him. You know, he called, made some phone calls, got his chain back to him. Uh, we talked about, um, I'll be sure, how he said Kim was healthy. They was talking, everything was fine, like a day or two before she died. She knows she, he said, he feel in his heart, he know that she was murdered. That's how I'll be sure talking. Not, 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 not big gene. That's how I'll be sure. What else we talk about? We talked about uh, Chad and 50 little beef and stuff like that. Just a little bit of it because, you know, I'm going to tell most of that part of it in the book. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to have a section that I'm just going to tell stories in. So, when people just want to jump to the story, they can jump to the story because they don't want to have, they don't want to see, hear what happened to Big Gene or his life. They don't care nothing about Gene and his life. They want to just know about the stars that Gene was around. That make me sick sometimes. Niggas is starstruck. Fish, ain't that right, Fish? Niggas is starstruck. What up, Suge Knight TV? I know you better not be using my shit again. <laughs> now my man strike your ass. <laughs> Sharice. Sharice, you care about me? And you threw me another heart? I don't believe you, Sharice. They don't get me strung out on you on this internet. I'll be sure looking for you. I'll be saying, all y'all hang up. I'm finna talk to Sharif. <laughs> Danielle. <laughs> be like, y'all, y'all hang up. Me and Sharif about to talk. Sharif be like, Gene, what makes you so different from other men? I say, I know how to come home and bring my check. When I get off work, I know how to come home and bring my check. Ooh, yo, check. Tashana. Tashana, oh, that's your name. Tashana Brifogo Chavez. Primo got you, huh? Chavez. I ain't get you, Tashana. I primo got you. Said some bad words to you, right? <laughs> you 
C4. C4 Taurus, what's good with you? Oh, okay. Ms. Kimmy said, making sure Nicole Lord. Not nothing, not yet. Anthony Barber, I don't know. It, it just ain't came through y'all. I, I guess I guess they ain't make it come through yet. It didn't come through yet. Sorry, Kimmy. It didn't come through yet. Anyway, appreciate you. Uh, let's get back to this. What I talk about? Just Jay? Just not coming in here in the middle of all the conversation? Callie Mae, what up with you out there in Vegas? How you Callie Mae? So we talked about all that. We talked about hold us, what else we talk about? What y'all want to talk about? Y'all tell me what y'all want to talk about. What y'all want to know about? Hey, Jimbo Fisher, I ain't getting my hair cut till I come to St. Louis. And my brother cut my hair. I ain't going to be around all these damn COVID-ass niggas. Y'all be seeing Big Gene. He be like, <coughs> I be like, I couldn't do much. No. I had, the last cut I had, I was in St. Louis. With my man K Slay. I'm not going. I'm going back in two weeks and I'll get my hair cut by my brother. Both of my brothers are barber. My father used to have a shop over there, Declan and Russ. I'm not, man. Listen here. Nah. Nah. My barber wanted $60, $50. He's talking about, yo. I said, yo, I just need a line and brother. He's talking about, yo, $50. I think I give you 30 already. He said $50. <laughs> COVID is a mother. <laughs> Yo, I really want to talk to y'all about some stuff, man. Listen here. I'm not going to do it tonight. You know what I'm saying? But I really want to talk to y'all. I might come on tomorrow, brother. Have y'all pencil and y'all papers ready, man. Your pencil, your paper, and your pencil, and your pad. Because I want y'all to really see what these people trying to do to us. You understand? And I'm trying to bring it to y'all in a way where I'm not trying to know some no conspiracy theorists or none of that old bullshit. I'm trying to let y'all know these devils is trying to take our lives. And we holding on, man. They don't know we strong. They should have found that out 400 years ago when they brought us over here. They have doctrines. They have, they have letters and stuff like that that they've been praying on and they've been putting on for years trying to make it happen. And I'm going to let y'all know. Listen, um, I'm going to ask y'all for a favor, man. And this is real talk. No, I have I I had no problem with no rapid security. One time with Jaws, but I straightened that out at a club. Justice Greenhouse. Do I worry about my life being yeah, don't worry about that, man. Been through a lot of stuff, man. I'm not worried about that. Ronnie Yale, Rush Kim. 
let me get this though, because I, I want to ask y'all for a favor, man. In parts of George Floyd's funeral. Chris Min Minjava, thank you, brother. But listen, let me let me do this because I've been on here for an hour. I know y'all getting tired of me. You know what I'm saying? Damn, whoop, whoop. Yeah, Dennis. Wolf one of those two bus tour buses. I don't know, uh, Kenny. Did he speak patois? I don't know. Jimbo Fisher, what'd you say? Oh, Jimbo, you on my hat. Come on, Jimbo, stay off of niggas here right there. Come on, Jimbo. Well, we ain't worried about how another brother had love. Hold up. Let me ask Callie May. Am I with or without the hat? Let me ask Callie May. Because she, Callie May, Callie May know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? What's up? I ain't got my earring in the How I'm doing, Kelly May? Or Sharice, how I'm doing? Christina. Because this nigga, this nigga's worrying about I ain't got my hair cut. Damn. Come on, bro. Damn. Ronnie, tell him. Tell him, Ronnie, you like to grab my heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell him. But anyway, check it out, man. They put us in situations that we got to wear masks out here on the streets. And that's making some brothers braver than they normally are. Because they feel like they can't get caught by doing their dirt. Last night, some brothers went to get some other brothers and they ended up killing a one-year-old baby out there in Brooklyn. Now, they going to get caught. Because what people don't understand is this. In New York City, every 17 feet, a camera going to catch you. So they're going to know where you ran from and ran to or ran at. And they're going to go through all the surveillance cameras. And those that car that left that scene, it's a thing called red lights. The police call them red lights. There are cameras in certain lights in the streets around a certain perimeter. They're going to check every last one of those cameras and they're going to run those plates on every car from that time that was in that vicinity at that time of night. And they're going to catch the driver. When they catch the driver or that car, they're going to bring them in. And you two fellas that did that shooting of that little baby and killed him, y'all going to jail for a long time. If they family members don't get you first. Now, I know that there's some shit in the game out here. And there's no honor among thieves. And you never going to get to a situation where you look a man in the eye and do your business with him. Because a lot of you cats are cowards. And you'll catch a nigga in their back. And as long as you think you got him and you shot him, you good with that. That's the type of world we live in. That you ain't gangster. You ain't hard. Because you go and shoot up a minor crowd and shoot a baby. 
whether you was trying or not. You did it. So, I'm asking my viewers to pray for that family, man, and pray for that mother that lost their son, that one-year-old son. I want y'all to pray for them, man, and lift their spirit up in his name. And I hope God just continue to bring me here with y'all. Thank y'all, man, for spending my day with me to get through this day. This is the day I lost my man, Chaz Williams, last year. It's crazy. I lost my mother <laughs> uh, 2017, my father 2018, Chaz 2019. It's crazy. And that's a part of being human. That's a part of life. That's the circle of life. We lose people. We gain people. Every day you wake up, know there's a new day that you can get everything. Not may not be right. But everything will be all right. No, this too shall pass. And just keep up your faith, man. And don't let nothing get you by. I want everybody to go. And it's this poem online. The bros know what I'm talking about. It's online. It's called See It Through. I want everybody to read that poem and stay chazzed up. This has been Big Gene from Raw Deal, the last big night cooking and conversation. Until we meet again, ain't number love. Peace.